6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage moteur Vulcan. Allumage des EAP et décollage. So with only a 24-hour delay, which is nothing in this space, this is uh, area lifting off from French Guiana, powering away up through the clouds into the clear sky. You see over the beaches and over the forest here. Our cameraman uh, Rene Zamora out on the terrace with uh, with Piquet and with uh, Samir taking these fine shots. Always very impressive. 775 tons is the mass at liftoff as Ariane leaves the ground. We're still being able to follow her by the naked eye. Maybe we'll be able to see the uh, separation of the boosters. The skies are clear enough. She's burning now five tons of fuel every second. That's two and a half tons of fuel in each booster. And the core stage is burning another 300 kilos of fuel per second, roughly equivalent to a dozen Airbuses, if you're keeping score. She's following the program in the onboard computer, which gives all the orders, including all the separations of the stages, which you'll see shortly. The DDO calling out that all is on, on board is okay. We're in the first of four flight phases. The first three are powered. The last isn't. We'll give you a description of each in turn so you can follow Ariana as she heads across the Atlantic, where she'll separate the two satellites. Right now, the first flight phase, the single core stage engine is burning and the two boosters are burning. Boosters will burn in just over two minutes each, and they're the first to be extinguished. You'll hear the DDO call out that milestone as well. All is going well on board. In a few seconds, you will probably be able to see the flame out of the two boosters on either side. It's not every day that we can see that. There it looks like the flame out of the boosters. Separation, Separation of the boosters. You'll see them fall away. Samir is back. Your eyes it, are glowing. Like dinner plates, you can see that like on my face. Plate, I, I guess. <laughs> it was amazing, Josh. Uh, you know, the two things impressed me. It was the light and the vibration. And you are so close. Uh, that uh, you can still the, uh, feel the you can feel sorry the platform was shaking. Was it really shaking? It was really shaking, and people around were clapping their hands. Everyone was uh, was amazing. <laughs> Super. All right. Thank you for that. You can see uh, the uh, area continuing to burn. The two boosters have dropped away, done their job. We're into the second of the uh, flight phases now. It's a single engine burning. Sanir, now that you're back, I need you to explain. On the left-hand side of the screen, on the upper left, there's a curve, and on the bottom, there's some figures. So on the on the upper left of your screen, you have um, you have a, a curve, sorry, which is giving the prediction, the the, the trajectory was we we have predicted. Okay, the um, fairing has just been separated right on time. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have a white spot uh, which is moving uh, into the, the prediction that we have made and which represents the actual position of the launch vehicle. As you can see on the screen, uh, the spot is sticking with the curve, which means that we are okay. So okay. All right, fine. And you have 10 seconds uh, to give us just a brief look at the numbers. Okay, okay so two important parameters uh, down uh, down your screen, uh, the A, which is the altitude, and the V, which represents the velocity. And as you can see now, we are at 140 kilometers of altitude and 2.5 kilometers per second of speed. Great, back with more, but for now, the news from Ariane Space. News is in two parts, part one on this year. On November 26th, an Ariane 5 delivered two new satellites in another successful double launch, Intelsat 17 for the U.S. and Hylos 1 for Britain. It was the fifth Ariane launch of the year and the 40th straight success for the European launcher. With the recent signature of the contract for the launch of SICAL 2, we have reached an important stage in the collaboration of Italian industry with Ariane Space. As you know, many other Italian satellites have been launched by Einspace in the past. But I think the launch of Sikhal 2, or the signature of the contract that will lead to its launch, 
will be particularly important. Petro Mateo, chairman of Hispasat, was named Business Leader of the Year. Offered by the Chamber of Commerce of Spain, New York, the award was given for her work linking the two countries through satellite communications. The European Space Agency signed with Ariane Space to launch Sentinel-1A. The two-ton bird will be one of four in the European program called Global Monitoring for Environment and Security and will be launched at the end of 2012 by a Soyuz. Jean-Yves Legarde was part of a delegation of French industry leaders accompanying the French presidential couple, the Sarkozy's, on an official visit to India and ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, earlier this month. And Jean-Yves Legarde's message, by the way, was on the importance of India's space program to Europe, since Ariane has already launched 15 satellites built by the Indians. That's your home country. Yeah, and I'm very proud of that, Josh. You mentioned that you can see our speed on the lower left is uh, three and a half kilometers per second. How fast do we have to be traveling to separate a satellite? So there's still a long journey for the for the for, for, sorry, for the X stage, I mean, and uh, we need a speed of 9.5 kilometers per second. 9.5 kilometers per second. That's pretty fast. It's okay. really, really fast. So when you see folks, keep your your eyes on the numbers, and when we start approaching eight or nine kilometers per second, you'll know that we are in the general vicinity of satellite separation. Six minutes into the launch, we're into the, we're still in the core stage burning, burns for about the 10 minutes. As promised, part two of the Ariane Space News on next year, big year with the ATV, Soyuz, and Vega. The ATV2 is so important for the European Space Agency, but not only, also for the other ISS partners, because uh, we are bringing to the station seven songs of cargo and fuel in order to, on one side, support the ISS uh, astronauts and on the other side to reboot the space station, mainly uh, when we are waiting for a very interesting solar max in 2013, so the station has to be reboot. Uh, what is important also to notice is that uh, the ATV-2 will be the only vehicle able to bring to the station cargo and fuel after the shuttle is retired. So 2011 will be a very important uh, year for uh, NISA launchers because uh, we have the maiden flight of uh, OVEGA, the small uh, launch vehicle. We are now in a crucial phase of the development phase with the final uh, phases. So on one side uh, with the system qualification review on ground that uh, certifies the ability of the launcher to go in flight. And on the other side, another activity very important that is uh, taking place in these days are the uh, exploitation of the combined tests. So the combined tests are there to simulate uh, all the phases of the assembly and uh, integration of the launch vehicle on the ground base, but also to simulate then the, the launch sequence and, uh, and the launch campaign. So I wish to give uh, to all of you uh, an appointment for next summer to, to see the first launch of, uh, of this new ESA uh, launch vehicle. And on the Soyuz side, the mobile gantry rollout tests were successfully carried out here in Kourou, as were the technical qualifications of the payload's upper part. The Soyuz launch pad operational qualification is scheduled for next spring, with a maiden launch coming shortly thereafter. About a minute to go, one minute to go in the first stage burn. While you were watching uh, the film, we were picked up by our first downrange tracking station over the border of Brazil. That's at Natal. Now, you, Samir, you work, you work at the tracking station here, which is called Galio. Mm -hmm. So, basically, we have a fire crane station, which are tracking the launcher. And during the flight, uh, our intent, technically, that are to go to ground stations, like the speed, the altitude. Constantly. Constantly, constantly exactly, in real time. And we are going to use the data to analyze how the flight is progressing. And that's my job, actually, uh, during the launch time base at the ground station at uh, Galio here in Crew. Coming up on the extinction of the lower stage, you see how that happens up there. It's, it's, it's the lower stage burn out and the lower stage is separated and the upper stage is ignited. You see now we're burning with a single engine like the lower stage. All those orders given by the onboard computer in the space of about uh, 13 seconds.